Welcome to our module on Generative Models Overview. In the world of artificial intelligence, generative models are like creative artists, composing music, painting pictures and writing stories, all through code. Let's explore four key types of generative models today. Today, we'll explore four key types of generative models. Variational autoencoders, VAEs, generative adversarial networks, GANs, autoregressive models and diffusion models. We'll dive into their strengths, weaknesses, and the best applications for each. Let's get started. First up, variational autoencoders, or VAs. Variational autoencoders are like smart compressors for data. Simplifying data, imagine you have a large, detailed picture. A VAE can take that picture and create a smaller, simpler version that captures the essential parts. Recreating data, later, it can use this simplified version to try to recreate the original picture. Why is this useful? Data compression. Since VIEs can represent large data with smaller pieces, they help in storing or transmitting data more efficiently. Anomaly. Detection. By knowing what normal data looks like when compressing and recreating it, VIEs can spot things that don't fit the pattern, like errors or unusual events. When VAEs recreate the original data from the simplified version, the results might not be as clear or detailed. It's like making a photocopy of a photocopy. The quality might decrease. Next, Generative Adversarial Networks, GANs, are AI models with two competing neural networks, the generator and the discriminator. The generator creates data, like images, that aim to look real, while the discriminator tries to detect if it's fake or real. Think of it as a forger creating art and a detective spotting counterfeits. This adversarial process sharpens both, pushing the generator to produce highly realistic outputs. GANs are excellent for generating high quality images, especially in art, though they can be tricky to train. In the next slide, we'll see a conversation between the generator and the discriminator. Hey discriminator, I've just crafted a new image. Take a look, it's supposed to be a realistic portrait of a person. What do you think? Examines the image carefully. The overall composition is impressive. The textures and shading are much improved, but there's something about it that feels not quite real. Really? What's giving it away? Well, the eyes are a bit asymmetrical and the background seems slightly blurred compared to the subject. Also, there's a subtle mismatch in the lighting on the left side of the face. Ah, I focused so much on the textures that I might have overlooked those details. I was hoping this one would pass your test. You're getting closer, though. The skin tone and hair details are much more convincing than before. If you adjust the lighting consistency and fine-tune the facial features, you might just fool me next time. Autoregressive models, which generate data one step at a time. They excel in handling sequential data, making them ideal for language modeling and speech synthesis, though the process can be time-consuming. In the next slide, we will see how autoregressive models work through a conversation. Hello, autoregressive model. I've heard you generate data one step at a time. Can you help me understand how you work? Absolutely. I generate sequences by predicting the next element based on all the previous ons. What would you like to see? Text, music, or something else? Let's try generating a simple sentence. I'll start with the cat sat. What comes next? Given the cat sat, I analyze the sequence and predict the most probable next word. In this case, on is a likely choice. But doesn't generating data one piece at a time take a long time? It can be time consuming, especially for long sequences, because I process each step individually. However, this method ensures that each part fits well with the previous ons, maintaining coherence. That makes sense. Your ability to handle sequential data must make you ideal for tasks like language modeling and speech synthesis. Yes, indeed. By understanding the context from previous inputs, I excel at generating human-like text and natural sounding speech. Let's explore diffusion models. These models start with noise and refine it to produce detailed data. They are capable of generating high resolution images and are easier to train compared to GANs. In the next slide, we will see a conversation with a diffusion model. I've been hearing a lot about how you generate amazing images. Can you explain how you work in simple terms? I start with an image that's just random noise, like static on a TV screen. Then step by step, I refine this noise to create a meaningful image. So you begin with complete randomness and gradually turn it into something recognizable. Exactly. 
Think of it like developing a photograph in a dark room. The image slowly emerges from the initial blur as I process it through multiple stages. That's fascinating. How do you know what the final image should look like? I'm trained on a vast number of images, so I learn the patterns and structures common in them. When you provide me with a prompt or description, I use that information to guide the transformation from noise to the final image. I see. But the results are worth it. It's amazing how you can create detailed images from randomness. Thank you. I'm glad you find it interesting. Turning noise into meaningful content is what I do best. When choosing a generative model, consider the type of data, quality versus speed, and computational resources. Now that we've met our four models, let's see where they are used. Variational autoencoders, VAEs, are used in anomaly detection in manufacturing and facial recognition. GANs are used in deepfakes and image-to-image -image translation. Popular AI tools like ChatGPT use autoregressive models. Diffusion model is used in Dala 3 and Midjourney. Generative models are opening new frontiers in AI, enabling machines to create like never before. Whether generating images, crafting stories, or composing music, there's a model ready to bring your ideas to life. We hope this overview has illuminated the path forward. In the next modules, we'll dive deeper into these models, exploring how to implement and utilize them in your projects. Let's continue our journey into the creative world of AI together.